Hey guys, I know it's been a while, but I really wanted to do a terrarium build video. So I have a pet African fat tail gecko and I've been wanting to get his tank set up for so long and build him a new shiny home that he deserves because let's just say his current enclosure is far from good and doesn't give him enough enriching space. So I decided why not build him a bioactive vivarium. This includes multitudes of flora and fauna to give him his own cozy enclosure. Yep, I really love building stuff and why not build this? My gecko's first bioactive vivarium. So he can live like the king that he is. To build this, I found this nice wooden glass enclosure on AliExpress last year. I've been eyeing it for so long. It comes with all parts included, though I still need some extra tools to build this. It doesn't help that the instructions are in Chinese too. Oh, anyways, but the pictures do help enough. So let's get to building. If you are wondering what bioactive means, it's a terrarium that has a self-sustaining ecosystem that contains live plants and animals. The key to creating a successful bioactive terrarium is to kind of mimic their natural environment so that is why eventually throughout this video well you will see bugs live bugs that i got online in order to kind of keep a well-maintained cleaning crew in that terrarium it's gonna be fun there, there's gonna be live bugs just to warn you Because this is a wooden vivarium, I would need to seriously seal the heck out of this inner part of the wood where it will be most exposed to soil and water. The sealant I use is water-based, so it won't be toxic for the plants, soil or animals. And I'm using silicon to line the edges and corners of the terrarium to keep it extra tight and waterproof. And not only that, for extra waterproofing, I'll be I'll be using a plastic tarpaulin for the inner lining of the vivarium. I also made extra sure that the plastic is heat resistant so it won't melt due to the warmth of the heat mat. That I'm planning to put in later. <gasps> It does look a bit messy because of the silicone showing through and whoever is planning to use a wooden uh, terrarium like I am, just make sure you use a lot of thick silicon on the sides. Make sure that the plastic covering here will stick on the wall. Ah, the most difficult part of assembling the vivarium was finding what parts I could try to fit in because most of these items I get online can be either too big or small so I did have to cut some of the wood or bark just to have it fit in nicely with the layout I had in mind. Oh, and the best part of it all was using expanding foam to create the background. Let's just say one can was not enough. I needed at least two of these so I can finally finish it. But looking at this foam reminds me of marshmallows. It's just so soft and squishy. Look at it, it's so squishy. It's been 24 hours and the foam has fully cured. It should make a sound like this. It's actually my first time carving my own foam background. My goal is to have it look textured and kind of like a rock or somewhat like those special zoo exhibit reptile enclosure background. 
Carving the shiny exterior will also help the paint or glue to adhere better. I'll be painting this with a mix of colored tile grout and a bit of water. I'm using this beige and brown grout to somewhat mimic the dry savanna mountain texture. I mean, I've never been in a desert or savanna land before, but this is what I imagined it'd be like. Now, do bear in mind, the color of the wet grout will be a lot darker when it's wet. And when it dries, the color is much lighter in comparison. You don't need a lot of creative skills for the background painting, but you can add different darker shades of color to bring a bit of dimension. Right now, to be honest, it looks kind of like jumbled poop. I mean, I really had doubts when I added the varnish on top because it made it darker again. Let's just trust the process. A drainage hole is not necessary for all terrariums, but it is recommended for bigger, humid enclosures that has an automated misting or water system. Any residual water in the drainage layer can be siphoned out through this tube. So I've got these tiny bugs online, yep. I mean, who would have thought that you can get tiny creepy little bugs on Shopee nowadays? So these are known as arthropods, aka springtails. The purpose of putting these tiny guys in is for them to feed on decaying plant matter, which jumpstarts the nutrient cycle, which in turn helps to improve soil health because they aerate the soil. Okay, I'm not a plant expert, but I do have some plants in mind that are beginner friendly and safe to add with any pet reptiles or any pets. One of my favorite easy plants to take care of is the rabbit's 
foot fern. It's the easiest fern. They look super unique with their tarantula looking rhizomes. With good misting and proper humidity, they can thrive easily. I didn't end up putting this plant in my vivarium because it was too big, but it is a fern I recommend for beginners. Ficus pimula, aka the climbing fig, is also a beautiful background plant for any enclosure. Because they are fast growing and easy to propagate, they do require some maintenance. Fetonias are robust and hardy plants. It's easy to read them because they will let you know through their leaves. If they need water, their leaves will be limp and soft. Now, it isn't complete without bugs to keep our bioactive activity going, to help break down my gecko's breeze products, of course. <laughs> so, these are several isopods that you can add to your vivarium. Here's something you might not know. Isopods have gills, so it is crucial that your tank should be as humid as can be to ensure they survive and do well in their environment with decay matter as their food, sometimes with extra cuttle bones to add calcium into their diet too. Be free my little insects. To give my wooden vivarium a more personalized look, I found this one Etsy seller that does engravings of pet names on a wooden plaque, so I decided to get Arthur's name on it and it looks perfect to display on the front door. I mean, this just screams Arthur's territory. Oh boy, the vivarium was kind of a hard one to do because it did take up like the whole month for me to assemble and I hope that um, Arthur here enjoyed it as much as I did. It feels very soft to touch him. He's so cute. It's finally done. My terrarium, I mean vivarium. Look at it. And, and this has been a month of me letting the plants kind of grow in. The photonias are doing pretty well. The moss is okay. I mean, it's, it's hanging in there. But I feel like the ficus had a shock and most of the ficus along the side I had to take down. So yeah, this is my final outcome. I really like how it turned out. It's time to put in Arthur. Overall, I think it's worth the time and effort to build this vivarium because I'm starting to see he is more active and curious than before. His appetite also increased more with warmer temperature. It gets really hot here where I live. It can be about 31 to 34 degrees without air conditioning and at night it gets cooler. I can't stress to you enough that proper heating is important for any reptiles because it will help them to digest their food better. And he does this little tail wiggle before he pounces which I find absolutely adorable. So I guess that wraps up the video. Thanks for making it this far and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.